You would not believe what I've been through. I went through a process called meiosis, a huge cycle just to become me. I could have told them myself. I was only in this for the womb service. Kick, kick, boom, then there's food. Nine months, they say, I'm going to get out when I want. Mom says she carried my weight. Please, you made me go through meiosis. So how rude. Hello, womb service, I'm hungry. Hello, <sighs> guess I gotta do things myself. Kick, kick, uh, uh no, I think I broke something. <sighs> Doc, oh, it's a baby girl. Hey lady, skip the intros. Womb service stopped working. So feed me, or else. <laughs> like I'm some kind of house to live in. For you to peer through the windows, from behind the curtains, whispering about the neighbors, taking axes to the wallpaper, bearing the framework until nothing but shivering timber beams are left. You have desecrated my home. The door is locked. The shades are drawn. I have let you manifest inside my heart, and you have thrown your blows against every surface, splintering hardwood floors, caving stippled ceilings, undoing every long day of work I have put myself through and leaving. Tool belt slung over shoulder. When my sun sets and you no longer find pleasure in swing swinging at my shards in the dark, striding through my garden plots as you walk back to your car, Thy words shall not condemn me, but I condemn myself. I am a house that all my lovers live in, illuminating windows in my chest that do not stay for long. I do not need them. I can stand empty and still stand. How to bake bread in 12 steps. Step one. Don't even try this for decades. Learn to fear the process. Step two, don't listen to step one. My God, it has issues. I'm step one, I always get to go first. Forget it, who needs the negativity? Step three, put some dry ingredients into a bowl. Realize you're recently divorced. You don't have dry ingredients or a bowl. So you rush out to the store to buy those things. You could have shown up at the potluck tonight with just a bag of chips, but you had to brag a little bit. I'm gonna bring fresh baked bread. I know how to do that, liar. Step four, just because it's so crazy, it might work. This one time in your life, try reading the directions first. Step five, suspect the recipe is lying to you. It wants you to fail. There's no way that much water is enough for all much flour. Oh my God, this is another bad life decision you have made, poet. You cry. You cry right now. Step six. Realize that your sweet, sweet tears are just what the yeast needed to grow on. Say to hell with the yeast. It doesn't love you. Put as much fucking water as it takes to roll the dough into a ball and then roll yourself into a ball. Rock gently. Step seven. Put some flour on a cool, dry surface and then put on some long rubber gloves. The flour is so the dough doesn't stick. The, the gloves, well, you're not gonna wanna leave fingerprints after this. Step eight, mold the dough until it looks a little bit like whoever hurt you this bad. Add fists. I don't know how many, it's your rage, add fists. Step nine, let it go, man. Will you let it rest? I mean the dough. Let it rest for about 30 minutes. By then it'll have dropped its guard. There's no way you're done venting yet. Step 10, now it's time to show that the dough, dough that step eight was just a skip through sunny lollipop land compared to what's coming next. Roll your sleeves up and regress approximately 867 years. Get medieval on it. Step 11, then stop blaming everything in the world for what's wrong with your life. But then remember, you forgot to forgive yourself for being human. 
You also forgot to preheat the oven to 425 degrees, but it's not a big deal. There's no need to get upset about it. I don't think we have to hear that Adele CD again. Step 12. Take the dough and separate it into two parts. Put both of those in the oven. And while you're doing that, think of all the pain you thought that would never get better and did and use that to transform these things into the food you will feed to people you may not even know, body and soul, and then give yourself some break. You did it. You made bread. It gets easier. I was born in Jamaica, a very small island. Now I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the bean. So I throw up my threes, you know what I mean. I spent years in Brooklyn, went to school down south. Most every Sunday I'm at the Lizard Lounge. But right now I'm here and we're putting it down. Won't you snap your fingers with me? I was born in Jamaica, a very small island. Now I'm growing up and I live in Rhode Island. Most of my adolescence was spent in the bean. So I like to wear green, you know what I mean? I spent years in Brooklyn, went to school down south. Most every Sunday I'm at the Lizard Lounge. But right now I'm here and we're putting it down. Won't you clap your hands? When I was just six years old, I had to wash dishes. Standing on a wooden box over an outdoor sink with a coconut brush in one hand and a bar of ivory soap in the other, I would scrub away with my little arms without the option of hot water. And my grandfather used to say, if he couldn't see his reflection, they weren't clean. So I would lean forward into the sink on tiptoes, trying to make sure that I wouldn't be awakened in the middle of the night by a belt. I would then have to scrub them in the dark while he watched from the kitchen window telling me, Stop crying for I give you something for cry for. That was a long time ago. But every now and again, as I stand at the sink in the kitchen, then the warm water caressed my hands. Inhale on the fresh scent of my dish detergent slash lotion, I think of those days. And I remember coconut brushes and my grandfather's belt. And I lean forward into the sink. I remember, I remember. You're the easiest person to talk to, no matter how far my brain has gone to. Whether I'm down on my knees hugging, when I'm down on the ground hugging my knees, or singing and jumping high in the trees. I don't expect you to stay here forever. That's for you to decide. But if you choose to stay to help me keep away the scary hate or the banging on the walls of my mind of all the words of the cruel outside world, I would swirl and twirl as we hold hands and walk down the never-ending road of stone path with bare feet, arm in arm, soul to soul, smiles reaching for our eyes, forever and ever for, and always, I know you'll be there, my best friend. She asked me why I love being black. I said everything. The way oil touches my skin and it glistens. I love that my hair is magic and defies gravity. I love reading about all the movements we start on Blavity. I love that we never sit still and always fight back. I love that we always got a vicious clap back. I love a full beard and a fresh snapback. No one ever can do it better than West Indian women in the kitchen. Are you hungry means I love you. Our language is our own. You my nigga, you my zo, you my homie. Got love for everybody, but black people know me. Got hundreds of cousins and they all ain't blood because when you're black, it doesn't matter if you're related. It's all about love. We the best hype men. Yes, sis, I see you slaying. Our intellect, the way we get it popping. We the rose through the concrete, the David to the Goliath. Think you can hold us down? Try us. I love being black because we stay winning. Love is pure, love is tender, love is heartful, love is gentle. But one needs to always surrender to love because love is a harsh battle. Such a waste that I love love, that I love you, that I love me, that I love us, but that us is broken like a broken symphony of sweet tunes, sweet love, but lacking harmony. Love is rich, love is free, love is vivid, love is thrilling. 
I hit the keys to the song of your liking, repeatedly hitting wrong, but endlessly craving to hear the melody sound right, when all feelings we fostered had already grown old and, le and old and left. Love is hard, hard to maintain. Love is boundless, bound to happen, never without pain or disdain, and flowing tears, a burden that cracks the core of, the core of all my fears, making me face the monsters that I hid behind stolen melodies, fake giggles, fake smiles, how I resent this lifestyle, fake me, fake you. We were never bound to be true. Love is sweet, love is selfish, love is selfless. Love is rubbish. My love and, lo and your love ma made melodies unfit to be together. Our love orchestra played solos, not a song for two. We were never bound to be true. Thank you. I know there aren't many people in your life you can completely count on when it comes to your feelings. You suffer from trust issues and the constant thought of someone using what you feel inside against you. Your world is filled with people who have taught you this mindset of being tough and to be a man. You're supposed to create the definition of a man, not others. Those people who sleep well at night knowing you're struggling and have no intention to help you have no thought of you when they sleep. Don't push other people out. Let them in and you'll realize how great it feels to let everything out. It's normal to feel this way. Your homies feel it too, and you know that. If you can be there for your boys, why can't they be there for you? It just doesn't make sense. Baby boy, when you realize that you feel lonely in this world or telling lies to yourself, you allow the behavior of the pure distress and frustration that no one understands, but you don't let anybody in. Other people in this world feel lonely as well, so how can you say that you feel lonely when those strangers are in the same boat as you? It's up to you to figure out how you can break through those walls so you can stop feeling so alone. Advice to a young princess being pursued. Here's a secret. He won't want you if you outrun him. Princes wish for swooning spells, fits of delirium, thin pretty girls in bone corsets made to bind. Better yet, he would be repelled by large feet made for trampling dirt roads. A prince desires the heart of a bloody foot bound in glass. The mermaid who pines for legs to open, and not the freedom of an entire ocean. You won't see him as you're coming, but you'll feel his hunger in the form of a thousand pinpricks on the back of your small white neck, where your hair's been pinned up so beautifully for the ball, his wedding night, for the red mouth of the volcano waiting for sacrifice. But that won't matter to you anymore. What will matter is the breadth and scope of the horizon calling for you. Your lungs will fill with clean, cold air, ropey, tight muscles you'll discover as you run to outrace time. Your row of princess and the broken hymen, your father and mother waiting back home with the dowry on all of their good intentions. Right now, though, there is only this straight line, a thread of hope, the sun and moon so far away from you now. Ready, go. You never asked me why I came, but you simply call me immigrant. It never crosses your mind that the choice was never mine. You will never know the sacrifices all that we own was sold to secure me the crossing ticket. I was the household's only hope. Yes, you sure don't know that so numerous were my dreams. I saw a vibrant land and us living well. I saw joy, respect, and equity. I saw peace. Father had already vanished as so many neighbors. There was a full hunt for young folks the regime tagged as enemies. You will never know the burden when all bets are on you as you are sent forward alone in the vast open world. You never asked why I came you simply call me immigrant. 
Mother and sister cried when I left. I held my tears to end theirs. Here too, you don't know. Many times I held my tears when grandma passed. I couldn't go. My papers were still being processed. Sorry, sorry you don't know how dreadful staring constantly at abundance when knowing that your people struggle simply to get by. Sorry, you were never told that long before I came, your conquerors occupied us and left chaos behind. You never asked why I came, you called me immigrant because of my language, because I still speak of home, because I wander the streets, because of my early morning prayers, because I am at your school, because I am at your work, because I dare to be. It never crosses your mind that the choice was never mine. The color blue is very deep, but makes people want to weep. It is calm like an ocean, or electric like a potion. I am jealous of the color blue. I am jealous of the sky with its bluish hue. I wish to be a flower, a delicate forget-me-not, or a beautiful dress filled with polka dots. Like the color blue, I can be mixed, swirled and twirled, without tools I can't be fixed. Hot like blue flames. However, I can never be tamed, for I am stuck in this blue chair with a forced stare at a whiteboard, Staring at it makes me bored. Sitting here makes me wish that I were a little fish swimming in a big sea, big blue sea, or a bird flying higher than the eye can see, or I could be royalty. The color blue has loyalty. I am waiting for someone who will spoil me, to treat me like I am the only thing they see. In this sea of blue crocodile tears, losing this color is something I fear. Without blue, emotion can't be true. There is too much loss without the color blue. And it is Valentine's Day weekend, so I'm, my second one is called Crush, and if the name doesn't explain it. Roses are red, violets are blue, no one prepares you for what love will do. You trip head first when you first meet. This person's not just another bag of meat. They say they care as they watch you smile and play with your hair, till they don't, and suddenly you're no longer afloat. Your boat sunk by a tidal wave of feelings you thought they had craved. A crush is a crush because you could get crushed, so you learn to keep your feelings hushed until they disappear. But the words forever ringing in your ears, the fantasies and thoughts never truly lost, just covered by a coat of frost. Hot summer spent on fake grass, marching drill until the sun hit the tip of the stands, day after day until the brass melted into his hands, becoming a part of him. Summer set, school bells blare, he roams the long prison-like halls unaware. He spits out yellow-bellied insecurities with big-bellied laugh and, and shies away from photographs. He looks up to me even though I look up to him, even though he looks down on me. Every day we practice with our trombones. Every day we sit in the dark with our headphones, listening to music that makes us sad so we can feel something. He's always stumped with things to do, people to see. Relaxing isn't a word in his parents' dictionaries. He's under a lot of thumbs, hair fading gray rapidly. He doesn't do much of anything happily. When we're together, our, laughs, our laughter echoes through the room, his smiles stretches a mile wide while my face crinkles like a rugged strip on the roadside. On bus rides home from unimpressing football games, I sleep in his lap. He's warm and calm. The bus rides are typically cold and long. With every pole, the bus has an internal earthquake. He's a night owl soaring through the cities, never letting anyone give him pity. You walk alone into the hands of the forest. Birds are eating your memory crumbs. Your life's wrung out in dull plans. The hours leaking into a devoured mind. 
Last night, I dreamt us young. Third floor door locked against dry dust smell of tenement stairs. The unpainted kitchen bent beneath its muted gray where empty stove pans coated your tongue with a color that tastes of cheap aluminum. This morning brings crow black wings, relentless in their noiseless flapping. Your eyes push against me like a flea to bear in mind the fairy tale and Gretel unlocking the cage door. If they don't like the first sentence, they stop paying attention, whether talking, yelling, or swallowing secrets. The pyromaniac from your third grade class, who is now a firefighter, dances around like a court gesture, throwing verbal firecrackers as you mentally cruise control the conversation. Instead, your focus and fingers on the bump of tissue you noticed in your midsection about two months ago, as you hope they're both just a symptom of age and will go away. You wonder how you could believe that words don't validate us, but act like people could. In and out of adolescence, we should be past that. The kid who used to help you cheat in Spanish class recalls the time you made your pregnant teacher, who was also your neighbor, cry, though he doesn't know you later brought her flowers and apologized, even though you didn't understand what you did wrong. Her, over there, maiden-like, she turns caterpillars into butterflies with her words, but they catch fire when she speaks. In and out of high school, kings no longer reign, but everyone reps royalty. Queens no longer feign, but everyone assumes loyalty. One down. <laughs> also, thank everyone for coming and listening. Um, if I'm trembling too much or I go too fast, shout at me and tell me to slow down. Um, this one is titled, It Doesn't Matter How You Get There. Um, and this is about a party that I did not want to be at. Um, <laughs> Madness is less genetic and more of an environmentally triggered effect. He argued on the balcony while he sipped his Bud Light. I stopped listening because in my mind they both result in the same.